strike. Vinay and Bharat, I think only the two, both of you are here. I think the rain has also caused disturbance to our usual schedule. But still, I think even for those who are not present here, uh, we'll record this session and share it online so that you can also access it. So let us quickly go through this discussion, test 4. Uh, based on the scripts, only few students wrote this test. Bharat here is with me with the script. So overall, I think in general, the performance was better. This could be because of two reasons. One, first is the fact that paper 2 is a easier paper to handle than paper 1. Second is practice. I think in the first test, all of you had just touched anthro after a long break, right? After prelims, you had long break preparing for prelims and suddenly touched optional after a long time. So, you will be rusty. That is also another reason why your performance would not have been as you would have liked it to be. But now, since you wrote a couple of tests, you are now in the groove. So, that is also probably a reason for the improvement. And of course, third, I have also been slightly liberal in terms of evaluation. In the beginning, you are in a position to take critical feedback. But as you go, it also helps to have some encouraging response. Of course, we are not trying to encourage you even when you are writing bad, but when there is good work, having some encouragement gives you the incentive to work harder. That is the reason for the higher performance. So, on this note, I think I have seen a couple of student scripts. Overall, there has been a better performance than the previous. And tripes is also an easy topic to write. So, did not find much to discuss in terms of issues, but I will quickly tell you where we have faced, where examples or some data can be used. That will be our focus. So, the first question, we will first begin with 1A, that is ethnicity. So, again, here the idea is not that you will write ethnicity from thinker's point of view not ethnicity only from thinkers point of view or just keep on discussing how various thinkers have discussed ethnicity. This is not ethnicity in paper 1, it is ethnicity in paper 2. So, what I was expecting is discussing ethnicity in the context of India. I was surprised why there was not much focus on this aspect, why there was not much attention to the uh, issue of how ethnicity is playing a role in the Indian scenario. So, in India, we have many ethnic movements and the movements are led by an ideology called as ethno-nationalism. This was missing from most answers. No discussion on ethnic movements, no discussion on ethnic ethno-nationalism and no examples. In fact, you could have given local example. Telangana movement is an ethnic, ethno-nationalistic movement. You have many other examples. The movement for Naga, Naga movement, Mizo movement, presently Bodo movement, Khalistan movement. These are all ethnicity based movement. Jharkhand movement, Dravidian movement, so, you have plenty of examples of ethnic movements in India, but no examples have been mentioned. That is a major drawback. So, whenever there is a topic in paper 2, you must quote examples, otherwise it will not sound relevant. Clear? Bharat, I think you did not discuss examples. You should discuss ethnicity from this point of view. No, that is paper 1. Not real ethnicity can go beyond tribe. Topic 9 in paper 2 is not exclusively tribal. Role of anthropology in rural and tribal development. You will take many rural examples. So, here you can go beyond it, but even if you think 
restrict yourself to tribal issues. You have so many tribal examples, Jharkhand movement, Bodo movement, Chhattisgarh movement, Nagaland movement. But for ethnicity, you can go beyond tribal issues. It's a generalistic phenomena and not just restricted to tribes. Next, B. B is about denotified tribes. Even here, I was surprised to find why there was issue with right and quality content. Denotified tribes, it's very easy. In fact, if you just have to read the content given in Kaka committee report. He has very, very elegantly covered this topic of denotified tribes. So, you have to mention CTA Act, Criminal Tribes Act 1871, followed by Habitual Offenders Act. Nineteen fifty-two, and you must highlight the stigma this community has facing, because one of the major issues of this community is the stigma that they have been facing. One of the major issues is that they are seen as criminals from birth, and that is leading to stigma and social discrimination. This is the other issue. So, this was not discussed and then what are the challenges they are facing that is loss of traditional livelihood and other issues, uh, police atrocities, custodial deaths, torture, criminalization. In fact, the recent movie Jai Beam is an example of how some denotified tribes are taken for right and finally, what is the way forward? In way forward, you can talk about there is one commission which was constituted to study the status of these groups Balakrishna Renke Commission. This must this was not mentioned at all. You can take their recommendations. This commission suggested that there must be 10 percent quota for them. It suggested that you have to extend prevention of atrocities against SCST Act to these people also and it asked for setting up a national commission for denotified tribes. So, this was not discussed and finally, you have for tribes you must ex exclusively use ideas of Kaka committee. The committee talks about immediate repeal of this committee in its report has three pages dedicated for this communities. It talks about immediate repeal of Habitual Offenders Act. So, he is saying repeal the act, Habitual Offenders Act. Second, uh, take up, remove stigma, take up synthesization campaign. Third, it is talking about providing alternate livelihood and skill development because the livelihood of these people what is the livelihood of these people? They do acrobatics, fortune telling, snake charming. So, those are their uh, occupations and those occupations are criminalized. Why? Because of one act. What is that act? Prevention of cruelty to animals act. Because of this act, so if these people used to take monkeys around and make monkeys do uh, a lot of entertainment acts and they used to do public shows on the street shows, street drama and make revenue, but that is no longer viable. So, you must provide them with alternate livelihood, that is all. And examples, name some communities who are denotified, Lodas are example. And there is one famous case study of how denotified tribes can be developed. It is called as Bidisha project. Bidisha project is a project taken by P. K. Baumik, an anthropologist and here he worked on one group called Lodas who are a DNT in West Bengal and he tried to provide ashram like model. This is an ashram like model where they were all settled in one place in an ashram and they were trained in various skills to provide them with alternate livelihood sources. So, this you can write. So, clear? Yes. Next, 
linguistic and occupational class this is very easy so you will not discuss this very straightforward what are the four language families and for occupational classification please use LP Vidyardi's seven fold classification of scheduled tribes LP Vidyardi provided seven fold classification for scheduled tribes he classified them into seven occupational categories and briefly conclude with what are the challenges facing these groups or briefly conclude saying that despite this we have many other ways of classifying tribals and not just linguistic and occupational so give some insightful conclusion in paper to don't just end it flatly d is communalism this is again mostly what you learn in modern india there is nothing much here specifically about anthro so you may add one or two thinkers that you know but try to uh, discuss how communalism is nothing but using religion for politics and how religion when it is becoming part of identity it is easily manipulated for political purposes and here you can use Durkheim that's all and we can discuss the communal problem in India majoritarian communalism you can discuss two types of communalism or you can follow Bipan Chandra's uh, communalist model there are three types of communalism according to him liberal communalism extreme communalism and moderate communalism so you can give that Bipin Chandra's three types of communalism three types or three stages He says in the first stage people are people have liberal communalism next stage there is communal nationalism third stage there is extreme communalism so you can describe that and finally you can tell how anthropology can be used to handle communalistic problems in India so you can use culture relativism as a way to understand differences and how anthropology can bring about unity of different people and help them meet on a common footing to overcome misunderstandings next E PVTG and ST very simple you could draw a diagram and say ST is a not a uniform group and PVTG is those who are at the bottom of ST and you can draw two diagrams like this this is society and ST are at the bottom of society within this bottom you have again subgroups and PVTG is the bottom most group in this diagram will help make it easy to understand and you can tell that in India we have roughly 690 ST groups and we have only 75 PVTG so PVTG are the most backward scheduled tribes you can use that and whenever we discuss PVTG you must give the five criteria that are used to identify them there are five criteria that we use to identify PVTGs these are first is these are groups who have forest based livelihood two they have subsistence economy three pre agricultural level of technology four low literacy five they are also facing population decline that is d population and then after basis this is this criteria was evolved in fifth five year plan and then you can talk about the problems place special problems faced by PVTG one hunger two uh, loss of forest three loss of livelihood then 
land alienation, indebtedness, poor infrastructure and connectivity. Some of them live in villages which have almost no connectivity at all on hilltops. So, you have a range of challenges and give some examples of PVTG. We have many examples, Chenchu Sara PVTG, Juang Sara PVTG, tribes of Andaman like Jarawa, Onge, Great Andamanis, you have the Kamar in central India, you have the Birhor, so many examples and specific problem facing each group you can give that is another way to handle this. Next. It is not comparison, it is about how, where do PVTG stand with respect to ST, Allah. So, here you are giving that. So, within ST, where is PVTG position? That is how we want you to address. The problems, solutions and in way forward, you wrote some example, but more than that, the famous example is the Odisha approach, because Odisha has the largest number of PVTGs in the country, something like around 15 or 18. So, Odisha has the largest number of PVTGs and they have done something called as micro projects, micro projects for each PVTG. You could write that is a model recommended by Kaka committee for other PVTGs also. So, you can write that example in your answer that is not written. So, micro project approach of Odisha. Next 2A, tribal supply. Again very simple, introduced by on the basis on the recommendations of Devar Commission as part of fifth five year plan and tribal sub plan basically involves A, some funding arrangements, B, it also involves certain administrative mechanisms and C, classification of tribes into areas broadly. Funding means tribes, all departments must allot something like 8.6 percentage of funds for tribal issues. In terms of administration, hold all tribal areas have been divided into ITDA areas, MADA pockets and you also have PVTG pockets. And in these areas, there is special central assistance as part of article 275-1. That is subplan. And here you must give special importance to what is ITDA. ITDA means basically three things single line administration, integrated administration, and it has what is called as area based. that is all. And issues in the working of TSP, simple issues, funds are not enough. In many states, there is no ITDA, ITDA is now present only in Telugu states, AP, Telangana and MADA PVTG pockets are neglected, article 275, 1 is not implemented. So, in practice, tribal supply uh, in many areas, they are using tribal supply funds to do non-tribal works in tribal areas. If they build a big road, they are saying this is tribal supply, but the road is used by everybody. So, tribal specific programs or schemes are not being done using tribal supply funds. So, what is the way forward? Again, court committee. This committee suggests that ITDA model must be scaled up and must be used, emulated in multiple states in central India, not just in Telangana AP. And it also suggests that. Uh, PVTGs must be given uh, special attention, special focus in every state for upliftment of their status. So, ITDA and they also suggest that ITDA model must be uh, scaled up into other areas like ITDA in health, ITDA in education and so on. So, they are suggesting that this model must be streamlined. So, this is how you can address TSP, tribal supply. 
for anything systematically background basic features some data problems in the working of it way forward that's all no magic bullet here so that's very easy to work next to b thank you to b is threat to tribal languages in india now again to answer this <coughs> this is a very loose question you can't prepare and memorize answer for this when you are writing about threat to tribal languages first briefly describe tribal language families backdrop background next talk about threats what are the threats facing tribal next discuss importance of language sorry language is very important because one language is a marker of culture and through language they derive their identity language also involves indigenous knowledge and language is you necessary for their empowerment in terms of education and also in terms of participation in economy and administration so that's the importance of language next don't directly come to threats so you should be able to in paper to you need to develop frameworks like this what is a language family what is the importance of language next what are the threats faced by them major threat is of course their neglect article for example article 351 of the constitution suggests that education must be done in mother tongue but for many tribal children this right or this article is violated no education in mother tongue for tribal children curriculum is not in their mother tongue next article for example article 29 and 30 provide cultural rights state has the duty to protect and preserve culture but in india this promise has been violated today we have the first tribal president but tribal culture is not given importance so tribal culture should be given importance means you should develop scripts for tribal languages you should print books in tribal languages you should have tribal research institutes none of this is done so in the absence of state protection to tribal culture and tribal language then naturally the dominant language like hindi english or the neighboring regional language like telugu kannada odia or marathi tends to take over and give examples of such extinction for example the great andamanese they have lost their language today they speak hindi recently one tribe called the bo became extinct in 2013 last member of this bo tribe died in 2013 and many pvtgs are uh, on the path of on the verge of extinction jaravas are one example the onge even chenchus for example chenchu people today speak telugu they don't have chenchu language anymore so this is how the language is being lost and when they lose their language they lose their identity and they are reduced to inferior status in society that's the key point can we link the sanskritization topic to language you can link but it's a minor issue yeah. only few people are sanskritizing and losing language many are losing language because of exploitation loss of rights and all that that must be highlighted so this is the issue and way forward what is the way forward state must take more interest education must be in mother tongue develop tribal scripts tribal languages take up uh, training of tribal teachers uh, encourage tribal universities tribal skill development centers and tribal research institutes to document and protect their culture and language and finally conclude with saying that schedule 8 which has the list of various languages we must fulfill the promise 
made in the constitution of promoting and protecting linguistic diversity. Linguistic diversity is prerequisite for cultural diversity. Clear? That is how you can include. So, link language to many things, not just education. Language to indigenous language, indigenous knowledge, language to education, language to employment, language to identity, language to empowerment. Then your answer will be broad, otherwise it will appear to be very, very narrow. Next is PISA. PISA, I will do C and E together, both are related. PISA, I am sure most of you should be able to handle. It is a very easy topic. Panchayat Raj extension to scheduled area. So, broadly introduced saying the importance of Panchayat Raj in tribal areas and why a special act was needed. What is the need for a special act for Panchayat Raj? Why Panchayat Raj, uh, the 73rd, 74th amendment could not be directly applied to tribal areas? Because the Panchayat Raj we devised is suitable for non tribal people. For tribal people, you need a special model. And the special model was developed through PISA. And what are the next after backdrop? Give features. After features, discuss issues. Finally, way forward. That is the framework. What are the features? First, most important feature is it gives lot of powers to the institution called as Grama Sabha. In Panchayat Raj, in 73rd amendment for example, Grama Sabha is not given importance, only Grama Panchayat. Here, Grama Sabha is made the point and this Grama Sabha is given many functions. For example, in land acquisition, Grama Sabha must be consulted, not consent. Consent comes in FRA, it must be consulted. Next. Grama Sabha can give licenses for mining of minor minerals, mining leases. Fourth, Grama Sabha is given powers to regulate and control ownership of MFP, minor forest produce. Grama Sabha also is given roles for to make development plans and Grama Sabha must authenticate utilization certificates that somebody has done some project and he has to be paid, then the certificates must be approved by Grama Sabha. They are also given powers over many areas like for example, they have right to prevent land alienation, they can regulate the sale of intoxicants, regulate money lending. and they can manage local resources like water bodies, grazing areas, sacred groves, all of this. So, in this way, Grama Sabha is given a lot of importance in this act. They can manage village markets, they are given superintendents over local functionaries like VRO. And next, what are the issues? Many issues in land acquisition, it is only consultation and not consent. So, the Grama Sabha is overridden. Next, MFP. MFP is a major source of income for tribal people. This MFP ownership is not still given. You must highlight MFP. Nobody, I think Bharat, you never discussed MFP. Next, uh, there is a traditional conflict between uh, Panchayat Raj system under PISA and traditional political institutions of tribal people. Here you can give the example of Oraos. Orangs have a system called as Pada Panchayat, their own traditional panchayats. Now, in Orangs, there is a conflict. Who should the Orang people listen? To traditional elders or people who are elected as representatives to elections? That is a big problem. So, how to take care of this? And the other issue is elections. Elections are creating just like elections destroy peace in our society, they are also destroying peace in tribal society. And of course, then women are underrepresented. So, breakdown of tribal harmony, women are uh, underrepresented 
and at the state level they are trying to block the functioning of this by refusing to devolve funds functions and functionaries. So, you can write all these points to substantiate PISA and what is the way forward? The way forward is they are saying that we must make an amendment to PISA, major issue is amendment to PISA to replace consultation with P F I C that is prior free informed consent. That is the approach that is being suggested clear. So, that is PISA tribal health many wrote well I have nothing much to add except that you could have added some tribal health data. I will just mention data that you can use and otherwise the framework is same why tribal health is a problem many examples in this you must talk about cultural as well as administrative issues cultural issues like their understanding of health they think if they are sick that is because of some violation of a taboo supernatural factors their understanding of medicine they go to shamans their reliance on traditional medicine and next administrative factors like poor doctor availability access to medicine hospitals are not good enough and also poor access to social determinants of health like water nutrition vaccination clean cooking fuel all of this is making their life difficult but nobody wrote health data what is some health data of tribal people for example life expectancy is only 61 much lower than the country in tribal areas imr is quite high because of crude birth practices they have very crude birth practices no institutional deliveries under 5 mortality is also quite high at 129 but they do well on sex ratio sex ratio is about 990 for the rest of the country it is only about 943 so they have better sex ratio at the same time they also have high malnutrition the proportion of underweight children is 52% of children are underweight and for poor social determinants you can use the fact that only 10% of households get tap water. So, you can use all of these in addition you can also cite that only 32 percent of tribal women have access to institutional deliveries that is all. So, if you can write this data that will make your answer better. Next left wing extremism in central this is very easy. So, we will skip this you can also write content for this from security topic, but the broad idea is that what I found missing in your answer also is that you should highlight extremism as a response to developmental issues it is not a law and order issue. So, whenever you talk about Naxalism many think it is a law and order issue, but as anthropology students we should be able to highlight the angle of development how left wing extremism is arising because as a response to development policies land alienation displacement poverty money lending indebtedness all of this is creating frustration among people and that is making uh, making them move towards Naxalism and how do we handle it? First we have to protect their rights improve the working of democracy by providing access to better development better rights at the same time for Naxalism we must do two pronged approach way forward in way forward you can mention about two
two-prong strategy. One is development approach. Second is law and order approach. One is development approach, second is law and order approach. In development approach, you can talk about providing better facilities. Second, law and order, of course, you must increase security uh, network. And here, you can cite AP model. How in Andhra Pradesh model is cited as a best practice. In AP, they have done this to reduce the Naxal footprint. Today, AP state, both AP Telangana are almost free of Naxal activity. Next, 3A. This is very important, FRA. I am expecting this question this year. So first, you must start with the backdrop of forest policies. Here in this backdrop, you must discuss the relationship between tribals and forests. How they have a kind of symbiotic relationship, briefly, not very long, but very briefly, you must uh, explain the kind of symbiotic relationship they have. That is, tribes take care of forests and in return, forests provide tribals with all the necessaries they need, like food, fuel, uh, housing material, their religious places of worship, all of them happen to be in forests. So, this is a symbiotic relationship between, like, between a mother and a child. Next, you can talk about briefly threats to this relationship and then very briefly how this relationship is being unsettled in the context of uh, various economic policies and then features of FRA. Here FRA basically gives three rights. One set of rights are individual rights. That is, the individual can own, I think you did not mention clearly about the how much land, how much land can he own? Up to 2.5 hectares roughly. So, how much is each individual allowed to own? Then they are also given something called as community rights. This is rights that they all have, who have collectively over resources, such as uh, grazing, grazing, water bodies, sacred groves, community lands, all of this, hunting grounds. Third is, along with this, they also get something called as individual rights, community rights and right to protect and conserve forest. This is a new right. They now have a right to protect the forest. Earlier, the forest department told them, you are outsider, you have no right to protect forests, but the, here it is saying tribals have a inherent right to not just stay, but also take part in the forest's protection and preservation. And along with this, you should talk about the mechanism to enforce these rights, mechanism to recognize the claims. And in addition, it also describes, gives Grama Sabha special role. It says in the forest areas, Grama Sabha's consent, not consultation, this is very, very important, consent is mandatory for land acquisition. So, for land acquisition projects, the consent of Grama Sabha is very, very important and in fact necessary. And here, after this, then you can take the case study. Famous case study for this is which case study? This moment is described very clearly in Kaka report. I am surprised why this was not written. The Niamgiri Hills moment. So, this case study can be written. And then, problems in implementation of FRA. Many problems. One, uh, claims are rejected. Second, you can talk about how they are using various 
excuses to avoid implementing this act excuses like for example there is one exception critical wildlife habitat so if this particular area is important for critical wildlife habitat then that area uh, can be exempted from fra so they are randomly declaring areas they like as critical wildlife habitats and in the process they are rejecting exempting the areas from fra so critical wildlife habitat rejection 3 that is another yes classification of urban areas correct that pvtg have special rights they have what is called as habitat rights many are not even aware that this act gives special rights called habitat rights to pvtg pvtgs are given special rights called habitat rights given their peculiar nature of hunting gathering economy they are treated separately and they are given a special right called habitat rights and this right is not at all implemented many do not even know that they have this right and then things like uh, while individual rights are enforced community rights are violated because community rights are difficult to enforce so community rights are not implemented and rights of women are also ignored rights of women are also ignored and consent is forged is forged or is forced you can give the example of polavaram dam here so you can discuss all this and you can also mention what can be the best way forward given this kind of a situation clear so that's how you must write fra and at each stage use examples examples niyamgiri must definitely be there polavaram dam project and any other examples across the country where despite fra recently supreme court orders were used to evict many tribal people in telangana and central india so that's how oh first i also forgot another important thing that you must also write here is who before you get into features you must identify who gets these rights forest rights are given to two sets of people one is other traditional forest dwellers otfd these are people who have been living for at least 75 years in forest they, they need not be tribal second category is of course forest dwelling scheduled tribe so these two categories of people are given three sets of rights and those rights are recognized through the process at village level grama sabha next mandal level committee and district level committee at three stages there is uh, scrutiny and grama sabha is given special role under this act it's a very simple act something like 12 or 15 pages long that's all next is yes Yes, that is okay, but you can mention that briefly. The contradiction is FCA and FRA are contradiction. Yes, that. Of course, that you can add, saying that though there is FRA through other legislations, there is a conflict, and FRA's scope is being watered down by passing on conflicting legislations. In fact, more relevant would be forest upcoming draft forest policy. There is a new draft forest policy. Uh, that you can add saying that a new forest policy also is in line and you can add any note on how that policy can strengthen or weaken FRA and in the backdrop you must mention forest policy 1988 because the idea of FRA comes from the forest policy of 1988. So in the backdrop you can say that this policy lays down the framework for 
the FRA Act in 2006. Next is education. Again, most of you wrote well. So, I have nothing more to add there except uh, giving you some data because data was missing in most answers. So, same data and some case studies. Education or health, you follow same framework. Same framework meaning first brief backdrop, second some data here and then problems or issues and these are of two types. One set of issues are cultural, another set of problems are administrative. Administrative problems means lack of funds, lack of uh, functionaries, lack of facilities, poor coordination, high corruption, mistargeting, all is administrative. Cultural is unique. This only anthropologists will understand. Both must be there. Now, data, many of you missed. So, what is the data that we need to write? First, according to census 2011, the literacy in ST is overall 59 percent only. Within that, in males, it is about 69 percent. In females, it is about 49 percent. This is much less than the national average, which is about 73 percent or 74 percent. So, in case of ST females, the literacy is only half. In addition to this, they also have low learning outcomes and STs have one of the highest high dropout rates and they also have low gross enrollment ratio. So, this is how we can describe the data. Then issues cultural, in cultural you have many issues. First, not enough tribal teachers. Second, tribal language is not used. Curriculum is not designed for them and their curriculum is not does not, curriculum can be used to discriminate. In their curriculum tribals are projected as people who are brutish, who are inferior and so on. And of course, language is a barrier. Then there are not enough schools, not enough teachers, schools are distant. In residential schools, there is violence. Schools are being militarized because uh, anti Naxal forces use government schools as shelters to fight Naxals, so on and so forth. And pedagogy, the methods are not relevant, teacher absenteeism, all of this. Education and health, you can learn very well from the Kaka report. He has covered it extensively. And in the report, he also suggests way forward. You can take look to the report for more recommendations. I will just give you a most important point in the way forward. One case study that you can use is in Odisha to promote education in mother tongue, they have introduced something called as mirror image textbooks. Mirror image textbooks. Here, on one side, you will have, for example, Telugu. On one side, there will be tribal language in Telugu script. On another side, you will have Telugu language in Telugu script. Let us say Savaras. For example, Savara language is written in Telugu script on one side. On another side, you will have Telugu script and Telugu language. For example, when you type SMS in Ostunanu in English, what does it mean? You are writing in English script but you are actually using Telugu language. Telugu language. Telugu language and English script. That is what you are doing, right? Same way they are using Telugu script, but to from tribal. tribal language on one side. So, when they read that script, the language looks like theirs. On other side, you have again Telugu script, but in 
Telugu language. So they learn both the languages. This is a very good case study that we can use. Develop. For, an, for example, for Savara, I saw the textbook. It was developed by one activist. So government must invest to develop such books. Then it will increase the educational outcomes of tribal people because if they have to learn, for example, if you have to learn in Hindi medium, all your education, what will, how will you feel as South Indian? Won't be so easy, out of place, exactly. They will feel the same about Hindi and English medium, Telugu and English medium. So when you have their language, enrollment is better. Next question is, land, oh yeah, the other part is, add a note contrasting them with Northeast Indian tribes. This nobody wrote, I think you also did not write. Yes, that is not significant, that is why. So, in Northeast, you can add here how education can make a difference. So, in Northeast, tribes in general are doing very well. And one strong reason for why tribes are doing very well in Northeast is because of missionary activity, access to English, edu English education at a very early stage. And if the tribes in Northeast are today having better social indicators, that is because of better educational outcomes. So, you can use that to show that to improve the status of tribal groups in central India also education can become a route. So, education can become a roadway for promoting greater tribal development, that is all. Next is land alienation and displacement. This also health, education, land alienation are best learned from are best learned from Kaka report. He discusses them very, very well and very, very extensively. So, you can learn from his report. He talks about the reasons for land alienation, ways in which it happens, what is the impact it has on people. So, such questions, what is the framework? First again, whenever you write for tribal issues, drop background. In background, you discuss the relationship between tribes and land. Because for tribes, land is not just land. Land is the source of their culture, kinship, economy, history and belief system. That you can use the word tribal way of life centers around their community. Whenever they get displaced, this breaks down. Tribal way of life centers around their community. You can use this line and displacement breaks down this communal linkage. And after background, you can talk about the extent of land alienation. Nobody mentioned data again. Extent of land alienation. There is a famous study by Walter Fernandez, which says that 48 percent of all displaced since independence are tribals. That is, 8 percent of the population are 48 percent of all displaced since independence. This shows how, how much disproportionately they are paying for national development. And in it, there is also one more study here, it is called Scudder study. Scudder is a global renowned person who studies tribal issues. According to Scudder study, based on detailed survey of resettlement outcomes of 50 large dams around the world. He studied resettlement outcomes of 50 large dams. It points out that in 82 percent of the cases, in 82 percent of the cases, projects
worsen the livelihood of displaced two it also point out that rehabilitation in a, in 82% of cases was not successful that's a very big issue and in kaka committee report on this there are many case studies of this next after extent you can talk about reasons or ways in which land acquisition happens one for project second for national parks third through conflict fourth through uh, revenue officials corruption fifth through manipulation of records sixth through failure of administration because our land records are based on private property but tribal ownership is community based so we are not able to recognize the ownership of land like this the committee report discusses so many ways in which this happens then finally what is the impact land alienation has on tribal people and lastly way forward lastly you can talk about way forward that's it way forward also the committee discusses many way forwards like minimize the displacement take gram sabha's consent first and look for alternative models instead of going for land alienation land acquisition look for land pooling land leasing if you do this there is no need to forcibly acquire land land pooling is one idea which is being used for ap capital land leasing is another important idea or in japan and uh, canada they have models called as equity sharing in the project where those who are given who have given land for the project are given shares in the pro, in the developed project if you gave land for a dam they give you like 1% or 2% shares so that because you gave land in return you are getting share in the benefit development benefits but here that is not happening so you can discuss all of that and finally impact what is the impact of dams on people so what kind of impact can this have here one this is something you can take down one famous scientist called sarnia he studied the development displacement across the world and identified that whenever people are displaced they face eight fold risks they face eight fold risks these are one joblessness two landlessness three homelessness four marginalization five food insecurity six increased morbidity and mortality seven loss of common pool resources cpr eight social disarticulation so you can write these to examine the impact of uh, tribal uh, impact of development on tribal people that's how you can handle this question clear this is a very expected question and you must not lose this next the other questions are very repetitive so we will try to finish them quickly fourth a relationship between tribal communities and nation state now here as i said students like bharat interpret this question to mean how uh, tribes across the world are faring how tribal communities in china 
tribal communities in Turkey, Africa or America, how are they faring, Australia, how are they faring vis-a-vis -vis India, but that is not the question. This question is about tribes and nation state meaning Indian government, okay, nation states means government of India, the relationship between the government and tribal people. So here you must begin with saying that the integration, the relationship is based on integration and not either isolation or assimilation. So the relationship between tribal people and nation state is on the principles of integration as enunciated in the tribal Panchashil. And briefly discuss Panchashil, then how Panchashil, where, where do you find integration measures? Integration is found in the provisions of fifth, sixth schedules, it is found in tribal sub plan, it is found in FRA, PISA. So list out the policies which are trying to take integration forward and various development measures like Trifed, uh, Tribal Ministry, etc. GCC in Andhra Pradesh, these are all examples of integration. But there are many issues despite this. Talk about how there are many problems in implementing 5th and 6th schedule, FRA, PISA briefly, each briefly. And finally, suggest a way forward. How can we improve the terms of relationship between tribes and nation state? We can do this by protecting and promoting their rights, protecting their rights in land, forest and water, jal, jungle and jameen, that is the slogan and giving them autonomy by measures like smaller states, six schedule and three promoting their, preserving their culture. By doing these things, we give tribal people a better say in the working of the demo, democratic institution, clear? Fourth B is very simple, NGOs in tribal development, I will not discuss this, I will just give you some NGOs examples. I posted an article in the group where various uh, important NGOs names are discussed. You will also get some important NGO names from Kaka report if you do not know names of NGOs. NGO examples must be given. One famous NGO is Vasundhara. This Vasundhara is based out of AP and Hyderabad, working for tribal people. There is Action Aid, there is PUCL, there is Laya, there is Lok Biradari Prakalp. It is being run by Prakash Amte, son of Baba Amte, to promote tribal health, you also have Amnesty International fighting on the issue of human rights and yes, there is one more Indian Social Institute, so these are some NGO names, you can use these names to support your answer in addition to what you already wrote. I also posted five NGO names in the group. Clear? NGO is very simple. You can just use your GS to develop the answer. Next is 4C because NGOs are there in GS2 also. Most of the content is same, just that here you will emphasize tribal problems, tribal health, tribal education and some tribal NGOs. 4C is shifting cultivators. Even for this, I posted an article in the group, linked to an article that discusses how shifting cultivation is increasingly becoming difficult because of climate change, because of population pressure, because of depletion of forests and what are the alternatives for shifting cultivators. In fact, we have famous case study of how Riangs, Riangs, what is the other name for Riangs? Bru, Bru people in Tripura, how they have been transitioned from uh, shifting cultivation to agriculture how government in Tripura has taken measures to shift these people from this kind of agriculture to uh, this kind of agriculture to proper full fledged agriculture. You can also write that and I posted an article, you can use that to 
substantiate your answer. 5A action anthropology. So, action anthropology is very different from applied anthropology and nobody wrote this word. This term was coined by not L.P. Vidyardi, but one American anthropologist called Saul Tax. Saul Tax coined this term. The idea of uh, action anthropology is that anthropologist, anthropology must become some kind of an activist discipline. This is like an extension of postmodernist thinking. So, anthropology must become activist like and anthropologists must take up projects for tribal development on a voluntary basis, not by accepting funds from government. In fact, one example of action anthropology in India is what we discussed earlier in DNT, Bidisha project of P. K. Baumik is an example of this is an example of action anthropology, where the anthropologist himself raises funds from various sources and takes a project voluntarily for the benefit of tribal people instead of uh, relying on government or other donors. This is action anthropology. And so, and you can also discuss the issues facing this kind of project, the issues facing uh, action anthropology. That is, though this idea is very revolutionary, we did not have we did not have many models where this idea was implemented. We did not have uh, major work in this direction because anthropologists what should they do? Should they study or should they raise funds? So, no major work came out of this thinking. Correct, very relevant studied tribals extensively, but what did he do? Did he do any project? You can do small ashrams, but even that he did not do. He learned them, he expressed their voice. When he became tribal advisor, he proposed policies for their development, that is all. This is slightly different, taking projects for them, like creating an ashram, creating hospital, creating uh, a movement for tribal rights. Those things can be seen, but they are NGOs. So, here anthropologists must do, that is the key idea. So, you can describe the idea proposed by Saul Tax, example in India, but problems in action anthropology. It is too difficult to do this, it is almost impractical. So, you can say that anthropologists must work as a team with social workers and government together, collaborative. Anthropologists, this idea proposes that anthropologists must work only in isolation. That will not work. To have real meaningful change, we need coordination and collaboration across different sectors, government, NGOs, anthropologists. So, that way this is a very idealistic approach, too idealistic to be practical. Yes. Tribals they take, they do not not against tribals, but they do not want government or corporates to be involved. We have example, opposite examples of this like Arco coffee for example, Arco coffee is a major brand now. Why is it a big brand? Who did it? Not tribals. This was supported by Infosys, Mahindra. Many corporates use their CSR funds to promote this brand. Anand Mahindra is on board of Arku Coffee. Chris Gopal Krishnan of Infosys is on board of Arku Coffee. NGOs were involved, scientists were involved, corporates were involved. All together created a big social reform, social revolution. So, this is a positive story and this is again against action anthropology. So, this is action anthropology comes from deep rooted suspicion for everybody else. So, everybody is there to exploit tribal people. Exactly. So, that is why this idea though in theory sounds very good, it did not really practically it is not possible. And next part is role of anthropology in rural and tribal development. Here very simple. In when you talk about role of anthropology in rural and tribal development, you need to take many examples. You need to take many case studies and discuss. For rural development, the easiest case studies to take are how we have overcome open defecation, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan story. 
and the story of how self help groups sgs in india are causing transformation in rural areas and for tribal development you can take what we just discussed how anthropological knowledge can be used to handle improve literacy outcomes improve health care outcomes for tribal people just discuss these four case studies in detail and in discussing this highlight on not cultural administrative factors but cultural factors how anthropologists understanding of culture like open defecation many thought open defecation people are uh, relieving themselves outside because they are lazy or because they are poor but when you study we realize it is because of caste because people have caste mindset they think of getting building a toilet in their home as polluting so they don't want to build toilet even if they have money so like this anthropology can reveal the cultural issues which are stopping progress which are behind various problems in the society that's how you can write this in fact the next question is actually a continuation of this it's the same question uh, 5b is the same issue but asked in a different manner the significance of cultural and administrative factors in tribal development same you will use same case studies same thing i just asked both these to see if you can respond to the same topic framed differently so you can talk about cultural factors again in various areas so whenever questions like this come take various areas so cultural factors right first cultural factors in various domains education health women empowerment poverty then administrative factors again same you can use many more dimensions you can use for a political empowerment and so on so what are the factors in education or cultural administrative finally you will say that to ensure development in tribal areas we need not we cannot think only in terms of administrative factors generally government tries to think in terms of administrative factors if they are if they want benefits they'll think we should build more buildings then there'll be more schools we should give more funds lay big roads then there'll be development but here this alone is not sufficient we should also have culture just discuss various uh, themes and in each of them how cultural issues can be used to overcome poverty here for case studies in ember and ember there is one chapter called applied and practicing anthropology that chapter has many examples of how anthropological knowledge was used to affect everyday change in dams in schools to increase enrollment to improve uh, health of lactating mothers to improve mmr imr to improve vaccination rates how in various ways anthropologists understanding of cultural factors was used to improve outcomes one case study we'll find is about in kalahandi odisha in 90s 96 or something there was severe polio but tribal people were not taking vaccine they thought when red cross went to give them vaccines they thought these fellows are coming to kill us with their syringes so there was no Uh, of take of vaccination or polio medicine after many efforts the red cross people went to shaman of this tribe they bribed him a little and the fellow went into a trance and he says okay i went into a trance i talked to our spirit the spirit told us that she has sent these vaccines with these fellows and she wants you to take them or she'll be unhappy then people were ready to take vaccines so how do you address vaccine hesitancy in tribal societies by administrative factors or cultural factors even for covid there is hesitancy some tribal groups in central india like gonds they believe that they have tattoos and tattoos will protect them against virus 
they are not taking vaccine. So, in such cases you need to understand the cultural issue behind the problem and you have to address the issue culturally. So, in this case they went to the local person whom people trust, people do not trust doctors, they trust their medicine man or shaman. So, you go through them and through them you get people's trust. So, this is all use of cultural factors. So, you will find many such case studies in Ember and Ember, one of the last chapters, it is called Applied and Practicing Anthropology. There they give extensive examples of such issues. Next last question, impact of non-tribal contact on social institutions of tribal people with suitable examples. The key word here is examples. You must give as many examples as possible. So, first impact, again brief backdrop on how tribal culture used to be before contact. Before contact, contact with outsiders, what is the nature of tribal culture? Next, means of contact, how did contact happen? How did contact happen? It happened through religions like Hinduism, religions like Hinduism, Christianity, it also happened through commercialization of market, entry of markets, it also happened through development policies, it also happened through democratic institutions like Panchayat Raj. So, mention the means. means of contact. Then what is the impact of this? How did this contact change? For impact you can use various dimensions. I think your framework was very good Bharat. That is how did this change there? First for any impact start with economy. How did the economy change? Hunting gathering to agriculture or they become laborers and businessmen. Then how did it change marriage practices? How did it change family, religion? Just use your paper one syllabus, kinship, political system, how did it change their language, folklore and what is the impact on indigenous knowledge systems, knowledge, folklore, tribal art in the general knowledge. You can use these dimensions and in each area you can give examples. For example, in marriage and family you can discuss how Gothuls, institutions like Gothuls or youth dormitories are becoming, are becoming extinct, how marriages are increasingly becoming conservative, age of marriage is decreasing, child marriages is increasing, nuclear families are on the rise from joint families, uh, how divorce is becoming difficult. In tribal society divorce used to be very easy but now divorce is becoming difficult. Religion, they are being absorbed into Hinduism, Christianity and tribal religion is being lost. So, just for any social change, describe how they used to be and describe how they are right now. That is change, we talking about change. So, to describe change, you must analyze how they used to be and how they are. And finally, you conclude with saying that, again conclude with integration policy that change is inevitable, but the issue is whether change is working for tribal people or not, change is being done in their favor or change is being forced on them. So, as long as change is inevitable and change is as per the principles of Panchashil and in tune with integration policy. there is nothing to worry, that is it, clear? So, I think that brings our discussion to a closure. I hope Vivek, you are also able to follow the discussion, Vinay sorry, Vinay. I hope Vinay also was able to follow it. So, please write, there are two more sectional tests, 
archaeology and physical anthro we will have discussion together because archaeology is a very small topic we will try to have a combined discussion after physical anthro test gets over because archaeology is too small to have a detailed discussion we will see the possibility right so continue to write and we will meet again for the next test discussion thank you